Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining me for our 11 a.m. devotional. My name is John Phipps, the lead pastor at Park Place Church in Pinellas Park. And uh, we had a special request today. Imagine that. Psalm 25. So if you have your Bible and you want to turn over to Psalm 25, that'd be great. Uh, I've got a little bit of a different uh, location today. I'm not at the kitchen table. I'm not at the office. And uh, just kind of enjoying this beautiful weather that we have. Good to see you, Becky and Marianne. Barbara, <clears throat> hope you're feeling better. Deanna, how are you, my friend? And uh, so I'm out here by the pool just chilling. It's probably like 75 here in Florida. It's perfect weather and sunny. So uh, I thought I'd just do it outside. And, and uh, I actually started doing my Facebook Live devotions outside uh, under the uh, canopy there. Uh, yeah, enjoying the sunshine. Shelly, I hope you guys are having nice weather too. Well, I'm hoping that you guys are doing well, staying safe, everybody. And uh, yesterday I had a great day. Thank you for watching my devotion. <clears throat> I actually recorded it at uh, 1 a.m. and then um, had Dina uh, show it to you at 11 a.m. So this morning I am truly live. I am here. I see your comments. Good morning, Dan and Julie. Good to see you, Bill uh, and Joe. How are you, Joe? Hope you guys are doing well. Pastor Pat, thank you for joining me. We're going to be talking about Psalm 25. I don't even remember who the request was from. I forgot at this point. This is my second cup of coffee. Don't judge. Hi, Jay. Good morning. So somebody wanted me to study Psalm 25. <clears throat> and I have to confess, I didn't know much about Psalm 25. Uh, but it is 22 verses. It's an interesting psalm in a lot of ways, <clears throat> and we're going to get into some of the interesting things about Psalm 25. We've got 17 people on, so let's take another couple minutes before we jump into the Word. And how are you guys doing? What's new? What are you guys out doing? You know, some of the restaurants have opened up. Have you been to some restaurants? Um, so, <clears throat> for the first time last night, we got out, Dina, Montgomery, and me. And we went to Bob, e Bob Evans, so not not the restaurant I would choose, uh, probably not even in my top 50. Um, but we went to Bob Evans last night, and I had a salad, and I had carrots, and I had corn. So I truly behaved myself. <clears throat> Monty had the grilled chicken, and broccoli, and corn. And Dina had the grilled chicken, and everybody was really happy, so... Good morning, Marinella. No eating out. I hear you. I think that's you that said that. Hold on. Yeah, Marinella said no eating out. Don't want to. Okay, I understand. Don't blame you. Good morning, Pastor Dale from Brookhaven Church. Good to see you, my friend. And Jackie, good to see you. We've got 25 people now. We can just about get started. Um, some people love Bob, Ev Bob Evans. Uh, Pam says she loves Bob Evans. Um, you know, it's not my favorite top 50 but um let me just tell you red robin was closed um all my favorites were kind of closed and it was because it was later it was like 7 30 we had a late dinner someone's eating a blt that sounds good let's get started shall we good morning caitlin i had a wonderful time Listening to my friend's devotion, uh, Pastor Stephen Hunley, he's a Nazarene, but we won't hold that against him. And he and I went to the Nazarene Bible College. Milani, good to see you this morning. Hi, Teresa. <clears throat> and uh, Stephen, I don't know if you're if you're listening, but what a great devotion this morning. Uh, Steve Hunley, uh, he's I think he's in Indiana, uh, pastoring one of the Nazarene churches there. Great man of God. He was one of my very first friends at the Nazarene Bible College and he and I have stayed close and been friends for a long time <clears throat> and he does a uh, wonderful devotion all right Psalm 25 shall we get into the the word now um, it's really good um, I'm reading from the NIV version this is also a Psalm of David Psalm 25 in you Lord my God I put my trust I trust in you that's verse 1. We're going to go through verses 1 through 7 first. Um, he says, In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. 
No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truths and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways according to your unfailing love. Remember me, for you, Lord, are good. All right, so verses 1 through 7 has a lot to do with confidence and prayer. It also has some to do with repentance. And so as we go through the first third part of this particular psalm of David, <clears throat> he is talking about the sins of his youth. Let's take a moment, just a, just, a, just a moment to remember the sins of our youth. We know that God has forgiven us for the sins of our pasts. We're very thankful for that. I know we are. I know I am. Uh, I was a scoundrel uh, for the most part until I got saved when I was 20 and uh and some even since then so I'm, I'm very sensitive to the fact that god has forgiven me for much and so therefore i should love much and uh because god has forgiven me i have a new life in christ and that new life in christ is uh is being lived now before you uh you know as a testimony of what god's grace can do even in my life but the interesting thing about this particular psalm is that come on over you can say hi Monty's going to be joining me. So you want to say hi to the camera? Say hi. Hi. Good job. So this particular psalm is actually an alphabet psalm. And I didn't know what that was when I started researching it. But there's other psalms that are like this. Uh, there's about five of them. But Psalm 9 and 10 are similar. So verse 1 begins with the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And verse 2 begins with the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And so on. Now, the reason why David wrote these particular psalms using the Hebrew alphabet was probably so it would be easier for the Hebrew children to learn. And um, this is a great psalm to read when you're unhappy with your life and things aren't going well with your life because it reminds us of God's faithfulness and how he has forgiven us for all of the, uh, you know, the misdeeds of our youth or even yesterday, my friends. And so I love the very first part. The psalmist is earnest for pardon for his sins. Um, he senses his own unworthiness. And he's satisfied with God's mercy and grace. My question for you as we look at the first seven verses of this psalm, are you truly repentant of your sins? And I trust you are. And if you are, and you've been forgiven for your sins, are you receiving God's great mercy and love? If you look at verse 6, verse 6 is powerful. It says, Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. And then verse 7, Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. I am so thankful for that this morning, that God doesn't hold against me the sins of my youth, or, you know, even yesterday or last year or whenever. You know, I get a clean slate every morning. And when I come before the Lord and I ask for forgiveness and repent of my sins, God is faithful and merciful. He doesn't give me what I deserve because what I deserve is punishment and condemnation. God gives us what we don't deserve, which is grace and mercy because of Jesus' is, um, um crucifixion because of the blood that he shed for us on the cross so hallelujah for that this particular psalm that david wrote was written about four thousand years ago you see god made a covenant with abraham we know that god loved abraham and abraham walked with god abraham was friends with god but god kept his agreement his covenant that's what a covenant means you see when two people come together in agreement they establish what is called a covenant. And God kept his covenant with the Jewish people. Well, the Jewish people didn't keep their covenant with God. And in Jeremiah 31, 31, God said, I will make a new covenant. And so God did. <clears throat> he made a new covenant. And that covenant now is called the new covenant. And we are under the new covenant. Amen. I think you're there. It's so bright out here. I can't even see you guys. Good to see you, Pastor Dwight. Thank you for joining me. We're talking about Psalm 
chapter 25. And so the psalmist is very earnest in his pardon for his sins. He's recognizing his own unworthiness and his affliction. What is, what is the affliction that we have? The affliction that we have is that we live in a fallen, sinful state world. Now, we know that the state of mind and, and the heart of which we have is righteousness because we've been redeemed by the blood of Christ. And so, therefore, we are the chosen. We are the redeemed. We are worthy now because of Christ's uh, um, grace and mercy upon us. I want to share with you, I got a, I got a boat that I uh, just decided to, uh, to name. And uh, I, I thought about a lot of different names for my boat. And I decided to call it uh, Redeemed Life. And so I went to a print shop and I had it printed out. It's just a big sticker that I'm going to put on my boat. But I want everyone that I pass by here in St. Petersburg, Florida, to know that I am living the redeemed life. And, you know, that's kind of like Psalm 25. David is recognizing his, uh, his sin. He's also recognizing the sin of his youth. And he's realizing that God is faithful in all things. Let's take a look at verses 8 through um, 14. Verse 8, Psalm 25. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. Verse 10. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful toward those who keep his demands of his covenant. For the sake of your name, Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Who then are those who fear the Lord? He will instruct them in the ways they should choose. They will spend their days in prosperity, and their descendants will inherit the land. Verse 14, the Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. So that's beautiful. There's a couple verses in there that I really like. But remember, Christ came into the world to save sinners. Christ came into the world to teach sinners. And Christ came into the world to call all sinners to repentance. And this is what it's reminding us of. Let's take a look at verse 12. Who then are those who fear the Lord? He who instruct them in the ways they choose. And they will spend their days in prosperity. My friends, we know that King David had many trials and tribulations, especially early on in his life. After he was anointed king by uh, Samuel, he had lots of trouble with King Saul. And he was going to be the successor of Saul. But, you know, I think it was through his hardships that he wrote Psalm 25. I believe it was through his trials and tribulations and, and some of the things that he did, his misdeeds, his, his sins that he realized. You know, when we look back over our lives, my friend, I, I'm 46 years old, and I realize to some of you I'm young, um, but I guess I'm middle-aged. You know, I look back, I got saved when I was 20 at Dryden Wesleyan Church in Dryden, Michigan, under Pastor Dale Nash. So, Dwight, it's good to have you join me. I, I look over my life, and, and, you know, the time of, in which I lived before I was 20, I, I didn't really know what sin was, and so... Um, I got radically converted when I was 20 years old. And, um, you know, I could go on and on about how I lived my life before I was 20, but it's not really important. Uh, just know that I was a great sinner and didn't know what sin was necessarily. Wasn't repentant of my sin. But then when I became a Christian at 20, and before I got sanctified at 21 and a half, almost 22, uh, listen to me. Uh, there was a time in my life in which I was really struggling with uh, carnality and and judging what is sin and what isn't sin and and trying to live a righteous life before God a, a lot of like what King David is struggling with here and there's been different times in my life even since I've been 22 all the way to age 46 in which I have struggled with different things in my life and struggled with consistency I've struggled with um, uh, sanctification I've struggled with loneliness I've struggled with brokenness even in my own family system in, in my children and my, my marriage and different things. And, you know, I, I'm really not that much different than you or anybody else. In fact, um, in many ways, I, I, I consider myself someone who is absolutely dependent on God's grace and mercy every single day. Not that I sin every day. I'm not, I'm not saying I do. I'm not saying that we are sinning saints. I'm not saying that. We are sanctified by the blood of the Lamb. And His Holy Spirit is in us to live a righteous life. 
But like you, my friends, there's been, there's been seasons in my life in which I'm not proud of. There's been seasons in my life in which, like you, and like maybe King David, that I look at the sins of my youth and I go, God, is that, is that really me? I mean, did I really do those things? And, 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 and very, very clearly the psalmist concludes the way that he began by expressing his dependence upon God and desire for him. Because every day I wake up and I say, God, I am not going to give in to the sins of my youth. I am not going to give in to the sins of, you know, my childhood or, you know, my wayward ways that I, that I took up before. And so let's look again in verse 14 and finish out this wonderful psalm. The Lord confides in those who fear him. I love that. You know, the relationship that we have with God is twofold. It, it's us loving God. It's God loving us. And he speaks to us just as much as we speak to him. But if we're not silent before God, we can't hear his voice, my friends. But in verse 14, we're reminded that the Lord confides in those who feared him. I fear God. That means I have a reverence for God. I love God. I, I, I seek him that he may be found and I know where he is. Uh, you know, I have my quiet time with the Lord. It's usually sometime in the early morning of the night, usually around one or two in the morning. Last night was no exception. I got up, I went to my prayer place, just like, you know, my war room or whatever you have, a prayer place, a, a prayer closet, whatever you want to call it. And the Lord confides in me. And I confide in him. That's a relationship, my friend. That is that agreement that I was talking about earlier, that covenant in which I come before the Lord and we make a pact. We agree on something. God, I'm going to give you my heart. I'm going to give you my ministry. I'm going to give you my life. I'm going to give you every dollar I've ever made, every dollar I will make. I'm going to give you my children. But what are you going to give me, Lord? You're going to give me your grace and you're going to give me your mercy and you're going to give me those things I don't deserve. You're going to give me an agreement, a covenant, and it's going to sustain me. And so I just want to remind you, verse 14 is beautiful, that the Lord confides in those who fear him. Why would the Lord confide in me? Because he loves me. He makes his covenant known to me. Verse 14, my friends, of Psalm 25 is very, very powerful. Let's look at 15. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. My friends, if I have any righteousness, it's not mine, it's but God's. He releases my feet from the snare of sin. He says, turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. My friends, are you lonely today? Are you in panic because of COVID-19? Are you struggling in your life over things that are happening? Are you feeling the anxiety of our world? Or maybe maybe you're in Michigan or some, some state where they haven't loosened up some of the restrictions and you're lonely. You're quarantined, you're shut in. My friends, the Lord knows where you're at. And if you're lonely, you need to go to him. You need to tell him exactly what you're feeling. Tell him you're lonely. Tell him you're lonely. And let him, like, he's, like it says in verse 14, let him confide in you. You see, I remember one time when I was in Bible college, I was so lonely and I would work all day in Bible college. I would go to classes at night and I had my own little apartment, you know, and for a while I lived by myself. I was very lonely and I missed my family. Uh, I, I, I didn't want to be in the ministry. I, I didn't want to be in Bible college. The Lord called me to preach, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to receive that. And, uh, I was terrified to speak in public, and I think you know that. And I was lonely. One night I was I was sharing with the Lord. I remember I was praying. I like to pray on my knees, you know. And if you still can, I, I highly recommend you get on your knees. It's a it's a place of submission and, and humility, and we just get on our knees if we're able. And we and we lift up our prayers to the Lord. And I was saying, God, I'm so lonely. And uh <clears throat> and the Lord spoke to my heart that 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 night I remember before I went to bed he said you may be lonely but you're never alone and and I'm not saying it was inaudible my friends but I, I want you to know this morning that the Lord spoke those words to me and whether they were inaudible or not I don't know but God said you're lonely I know that but you're never alone and uh, it was clear as day 
just as I'm reading this to you today, just as I'm here with you on Facebook Live, this isn't pre-recorded. I'm with you right now. I see your comments. I know you're there. God said, I know you're lonely, but you're never alone. Somebody needs to hear that today. And in verse 17, relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from my anguish. What was his anguish? Well, let's look at verse 18. Look on my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. My friends, if you are feeling anguish this morning, trouble in your heart, God can free you from that affliction of all your distress. In verse 18, he says he can take away all your distress and he can take away all your sins. You know, he says in verse 19, see how numerous are my enemies and how fiercely they hate me. <clears throat> Do you have enemies today? People that rise up against you? Maybe it's not people, maybe it's circumstances. You see, Satan uses circumstances to rise up against you. Sometimes your enemies aren't people, they're circumstances. You don't have a job? That's your enemy. That's your circumstance. You don't have enough money in your savings account to pay your light bill? That's not a person. That's the enemy using your circumstance to discourage you. So he says, look upon my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins and see the numerous, how numerous are my enemies and how fiercely they hate me. What are they? Let's be honest, guys. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but the dark principalities of this world. You have to understand that your circumstances are your enemies. Those things, do you submit to your circumstances? Do you kick the dirt and wish your life was different and better? Oh, Pastor John's got everything he ever wanted. He's, he's sitting in front of a pool, but his life must be great. Let me tell you, my friends, I've been afflicted. I'm in distress. My enemies are great. They're not necessarily people, but they're circumstances. You know, I haven't seen my son in nine weeks. Okay, my circumstance is my enemy. I don't have it all together. I'm afflicted. I'm hurting. Mother's Day is Sunday. You know, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be checking in with the group home today. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let those people know. <clears throat> and believe me when I say, my friends, Sunday is Mother's Day. And God's gonna open up a door because that sweet Dina, that pretty girl in there, right now, who's on the phone trying to find her dog. Her heart is hurting because Mother's Day is coming up and she wants to be with her boy. And I'm gonna call the group. Hey everybody, Pastor John here. Just want to say thank you for um, listening to my devotion this morning. And I'm sorry it cut out on us. It cut out on us because um, the heat, I guess, caused my phone to overheat and it suddenly stopped. And so I'm sorry that you didn't get to hear the rest of my devotion, but you heard most of it. Uh, I went on a little bit longer, shared a couple more points, and then I finally just said a prayer of uh, closing and that was it. So I just want to say thank you. I'm sorry that it did that. I'll be more careful next time not to be in the sun. And like I said, it just went off without me knowing it. So I probably talked for another 10 minutes. But anyway, I love you, Park Place Church. Just wanted to get on here one more time and say a word of closing. Listen, uh, you may feel alone, but you're never, never, never alone. God is with us. He loves us. He hasn't changed his mind about us, and he is faithful until the very end. So be encouraged, my friends. Be a blessing to someone today. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for all the answered prayers for our church and for our people. I thank you, God, that you remind us that though we're lonely, we're never alone. And it doesn't matter what we go through in this life. My family or their family, God, you are present. So we have no need to complain. We have no need to be dismayed or discouraged for you are with us and you are faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My friends, good news. Dina was on the phone trying to get her dog back today. We are waiting for the police to deliver the dog. Our little dog, Ellie, has been gone for, what, six weeks, Dina? Uh, six or eight weeks, yeah. Four to six weeks. And uh, so the lady who is uh, returning the dog actually had the police come and receive the dog, went to her house and picked up the dog. Uh, she's really upset at us uh, for wanting our dog back. <clears throat> she actually took the dog into the veterinarian and because the dog is microchipped the veterinarian realized uh, that and called us and the vet went back to the lady and said I need to return this dog to their original owners the lady grabbed the dog and ran out of the store so naturally the veterinarian called us 
and told us uh, where the lady lived. We called the police, the police picked up the dog, and the lady has called us monsters. So we're not monsters, it's been a rough day, and I'm praying for this lady. Her name is Andrea, please pray for Andrea. Uh, she is calling us monsters because we called the police. We just wanted to get our dog back from Montgomery. This is a special needs son, this is his dog, and um, I told her I'd pay for any expenses that she's paid. Um, but anyway, we're monsters, she said, but the Bible says, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, my friends. Anyway, God is good. We got our dog back. Pray for Andrea that she finds peace. Have a wonderful day, my friends. Be blessed. We'll talk to you soon.